should you get and build IRE? Short answer, yes. Long answer, this entire video. Iberia Saibansho no Transporter, Irene des. Anata no Rodos no Doctor des ka? Watashi no Akari ni tsuite kite kudasai. Shio to umigiri ni nomare nai yo ni. Irene is a six star sword master guard from Iberia. A former Iberian Inquisitor and student of High Inquisitor Dario. After the events in Stulta for an Arvis event, she is recommended by Calci to become a Rhodes Island operator and dispatched to the Iberian Special Operations Team, acting as a messenger between the Inquisition and Rhodes Island, preparing for the threat of the sea monster. You know, Iberia's future is not the only thing that is as bright as sun. Irene is the second six star sword master in the game. Irene's first debut is in the limited banner. Limited banner is undoubtedly worth it to pull. But even if Irene appears in other standard banners after her debut, she's still a worth it operator to gacha. Specialized in DPS, burst and crowd control. So now, let's see more about her. As a sword master, her normal attack will deal damage twice. As for her general stats, Irene's stats focus more on the offensive. She has the biggest HP and attack among other sword masters. And also got a talent that will permanently increase her attack speed and attack. Making her DPS significantly bigger than other sword master. Although when compared to Chen, she has slightly less defense stat. As for her talents. When attacking she has a 50% chance to ignore some of the enemy's defense. And increase the chance to 100% when attacking aerial enemies. At E2 Irene can ignore half of the enemy's defense which is quite massive. Both for her normal attack or skills. And while her normal attack can't hit aerial enemies. But two of her skills can make her do that. And this is pretty much Irene's main source to deal big damage to the enemies. As for her second talent, permanently increase her attack speed. And if there are sea monsters on the stage, she will get motivated. And double the attack speed bonus. The attack speed is great because all of her skills are in offensive charge type. I mean just to look at the difference. It will help her charge her SP and increase her DPS. Especially since her debut event will be full of the sea monster. And there's also the upcoming under tides event run. CC9, and IS3, which also will be full of sea monsters, and she will shine even more there. Okay, this is the list of her potential. She got a great bonus from the potential. But overall she's already awesome without one. Now let's talk about her module. Irene got the Y module which will make her ignore 70 of the enemy's defense. And increase her attack and defense stats. For Irene. Ignoring 70 defense is unnecessary and even disappointing. She already got her first talent that will ignore the enemy's defense. But if you want to make her stronger you can unlock this module first. Especially because the stats boost are on point. To increase her damage, and increasing her defense. So with this module, the difference between her defense and Shen is around 20 point. Now for the module upgrade. It will add attack boost to her second talent, but sadly won't add more attack speed. And yes when there are sea monsters present, the attack bonus will also be doubled. You might think this is not an impactful upgrade. But being a burst unit with high critical damage on all of her skills. Every attack no matter how small it is, is great for her. If you want to make the most out of her you can upgrade it. Now moving to her skills. Keep in mind all of her skills have an offensive charge type. So if she's not attacking enemy she won't charge her skill. And if you have SP battery unit, you might want to bring them along. Currently the best operator to help Irene charge her SP, is the upcoming 6 star supporter Stainless. And Irene has the new levitate effect in all of her skills. This effect as the name suggests will levitate an enemy into the air. Making them unable to move and becoming an aerial unit. And how long an enemy is in the air will depend on Irene's skills. And thanks to this levitate, 
Some skills will guarantee her triggering her talent 1. Marksman will prioritize the enemy from this effect as they're now an aerial unit. And since the levitated enemies won't occupy the tile beneath them. Trap a specialist can use this chance to summon their trap underneath. Irene got an interesting stalling combo with the upcoming 6 star trapper Dorothy. But later on that, now for her first skill. Irene will deal critical damage on her next attack. That will also levitate the enemy for a second. And shoot the enemy midair, and deal another critical damage. That is guaranteed to ignore some of the enemy's defense. A good starter skill with a consistent DPS, and a little bit of crowd control. Or if you want to use that wacky stalling combo with Dorothy. This skill is the best choice to do that combo. Dorothy's S to learn mind combined enemies for 3.5 seconds. Or 6 seconds if it's only one enemy. With this combo, you can create a powerful stalling strategy. But there's a lot to consider and micromanagement. From both Irene and Dorothy's skill mastery. That will determine how fast Irene can levitate the enemy again. And how long Dorothy's bind last. If the enemy already touched Irene the bind from Dorothy is useless. And you can't keep the enemies away from touching Irene forever. As Dorothy will eventually run out of her trap. Not to mention if you are facing fast moving enemies. Overall this skill is not bad starting skill if you still have her at E1. Or 4 IS mode. But for damage her skill 3 is significantly better. Now for her second skill. Target 6 ground enemies. Dealing critical damage. And levitate them for a few seconds. Stalling enemies in range. While also dealing some decent damage to the enemies. But you better not focus too much on this one. As burst damage is Irene's main selling point. And S3 is overall a better crowd control. And there's quite some problem with this skill. First, when the enemy is levitated, Irene can't attack them for several seconds. Leading to her won't charging her SP until the enemy is back on the ground. And other melee only units will have an awkward time with this skill too of her. And second, for whatever reason, they decided to make Irene. Unable to levitate enemy with more than level 3 weight despite being levitate able. And no guarantee her talent 1 will trigger with this skill. So those are the problem with this skill too. But if you're often fighting waves of enemies and have not yet unlocked a skill 3. This skill is of course better than her single target S1. Now last but not least, her third skill. First, Irene will deal critical damage to all ground enemies within range. Then levitate them all for 4 seconds at M3. Leading to a second phase where Irene will shoot random enemies within range. With an AoE attack. As you can see Mephisto and that one caster is out of Irene's skill 3 range. But because she hit the defense crusher, those two also got hit. She can fire 12 times at M1 and deal critical damage. During the second phase, her attack is a ranged attack. So she can attack both ground and aerial enemies. This is Irene's best skill and a very powerful burst skill. For single target and clearing waves of enemies. Although too many enemies isn't good either. Specifically, if the targets are spread out like this. You got targets on her front and targets on her back. Leading to her dealing less damage in one group of enemy. So you have to group the enemies closely to make the most of out this. And while the skill damage is awesome, it will only become very awesome. If her talent 1 is triggered. Luckily the enemies will be in the air until she fires all of her shot. It also has high critical damage and short burst. So Irene will benefit a lot from other external attack buff. Becoming another worthy operator in the buff army. For skill mastery priority. Of course go for her skill 3. If you are being cheap you can just leave it at M1. As the M1 mastery is important as it adds another 2 extra shot for this skill. But M3 is also very important to reduce her SP cost. For skill 2 it might offers a better crowd control since it has less SP cost. But with the problems I mentioned, and shredding enemy to pieces with S3 is a better form of crowd control. This skill doesn't really worth to master. 
and skill 1 is also pretty much the same. As for her base skills. Irene will increase the mastery training speed of sniper and guard operators by plus 30%. And after helping one operator train for 5 hours. That operator's next training time will be cut in half. But keep in mind the effect will disappear if either operator leaves the training room. So, will Irene become a good operator for your team? Absolutely, a simple yet a strong damager operator. Irene is a great DPS and burst unit in various content. Big forehead too. Also have very useful abilities at Elite 1. Making her a great choice for a newbie. And she has an even more amazing abilities at Elite 2 promotion. Not to mention her debut is in the limited banner, very worth it to pull. And if you failed to get her there, if she appears again in the standard banner. She's worth it to gacha, especially if you're lacking damage a unit. That should be all. Remember, Golden Age will return again. Jackpot.